Kim. I work at Lamanduri Orphan Observatory. Today I'm going to show you some propagating and non-propagating MJ events and discuss the implication of our observations on the propagation mechanism of the MJO and the initiation mechanism of the MJO. Also, I prepared some results from CM3 and CM5 models where we looked at how well these models simulate MJO and is there any progress between CM3 and CM5. So let me first give some brief introduction to the MJO for those who are not familiar with this. So MJO is the Medin-Julian oscillation discovered by Dr. Medin and Dr. Julian in 1971. And it's an organized convection in the tropics which propagate eastward with Blanchard scale and 30 to 60 period. So these three features are the basic features of the MJO. And the, this variability explains about half of total subseasonal time scale variability in the tropics, winds or precipitation or OLR, something like that. So this animation shows you the anomalous convection, anomalous precipitation from trim data that is associated with the MJO, and bluish color shows you the positive rain anomaly, and reddish shows you dry anomalies. And you can see the from phase one the anomalous positive rain anomaly developed over the Indian Ocean and it slowly propagated to the east and reached the Western Pacific and it the, the convection signal died from that point. And the this slide, the contour shows the same as before, which is precipitation anomaly. So here the solid line is positive precipitation anomaly and the dashed line is negative precipitation anomalies. And the colored quantity is the 200 hectopascal stream function anomalies. So this reddish color means there's anti-cyclonic anti flow associated with this phase of the MJO, which means if MJO convection is here, you, you expect there's an anti-cyclonic flow over this region. So you can see that the global impact of the MJO. So in other words, by modulating tropical convection, MJO affects global circulation. So that's one of the reasons why the, why the MJO is important. And this is a plot from the Lin et al. 2006, where the impact of MJO is nicely summarized. And previous studies showed that MJO affects the active and break phases of Indian and Australian monsoons. Also, it affects frequency of tropical cyclone almost all in almost all basins. And it also interacts with some El Nino events and sometimes L and MJO associated with MJO westerly wind burst triggers and so or some MJO events terminate and so something like that. They are all tropical phenomena, but MJO by this gross wave train, they also affect e extreme precipitation events over the extratropics and polar region, AO and NAO. So this is the, this is shows you why we should care about MJO and understand it. The second one, why is the MJO important is it bridges the predict predictability gap. So the by predictability gap, I mean the gap between weather forecast and the seasonal prediction. So operational centers make weather forecast every day, every some three or six hours, and it covers next one or two weeks. And we know that source of predictability comes from its initial condition in the atmosphere. And for seasonal prediction, we, we predict average 
temperature is precipitation for next season and we know we know that the predictability for this time scale comes from tropical SST where ENSOS explains much of variability in, in that and there's a gap between this time scale and the MJO gets this predictability gap by modulating tropical convection and global circulation exactly in this time scale. So this is why MGO is important. And to summarize this very brief introduction to MGO, it has planetary scale, it has 30 to 60 day period, it propagates eastward, and it interacts with a wide variety of weather and climate phenomena globally by modulating tropical convection. And it also provides the source of predictability in interseasonal time scale. As the <coughs> this, uh, 30 to 60 mm -hmm. period, you said the, the shortest time period, it does it also have like longer uh, oscillations associated with it? Uh, like yearly, is the, within a year, does the NGO uh, become stronger or weaker? The, the even the overall activity strength of activity of MGO yes, yes that it exists but by 30 to 60 day I mean roughly it takes 30 to 60 day period by tra for traveling between Indian Ocean to the West yeah. for, for traveling global the whole globe but, so, but there are also uh, are there also um, Longer periods associated with the NGO. Um, no, no. <laughs> I don't. I don't say I mean, some year alien MJ is stronger and is some year MJ is weaker. Something like that. Um, yeah. So if you so if you would make make a Fourier uh, transform, mm -hmm. so would you see peaks at only at thirty to sixty, or would you see other peaks? So this is the. Free result of free, free transform <laughs> is the <laughs> nice question. So the, the, this is wave number in y-axis and frequency in x-axis spectrum. So this part shows you the eastward propagating component and this, is, this shows you the westward propagating component. And you can see there's a prominent peak over this sub signal time scale, which is between 30 to 80 day and between wave number one to three, and this is the CMA precipitation in shading and NSET 850 classical winds, zonal winds in contour. So for for evaluating CMA three and CMA five models, how, how they simulate MJO, we we define some metrics from this wave number frequency power spectrum of precipitation. So east is the sum of spectral power over this over this domain and west is spectral power over this domain and east east over west is the ratio between two. So both east and the ratio is an important metric to for for any climbing model. So this is the <coughs> oh, glance on the simulation capability of symmetry and CME5 models for MJO, and the quantity shown here is the east to west ratio. So, how how dominant the eastward propagating component is over the westward component counterpart, westward propagating counterpart. And the blue bars are showing the CME3 models, and red bars are CME5 models. And we have more, much more models, but the average is lower. <coughs> but <coughs> GPCP observation is. 2.2 here, and maybe you may think that there are many models which is better than GPCP, but if you plot east and west separately, the this is the ratio, and each dot has different sl slope, which means the ratio. So many model has similar simulates similar ratio, similar to that of GPCP. But you can see that the absolute power of the historic propagating component is underestimated by a majority of CME3 and CME5 models. And if you 
actually if you average eastward propagating power, the average value is same. So we are far from a decent MJO, the climbing model groups, it says decent MJO. And I think part of reason is we don't, under we don't understand why, what, what is the MJO and, and what, why it has planetary scale, why it propagates eastward, why it has substitution time scales, something like that. So here we <laughs> did some diagnostic studies using real analysis data and observed OLR data to, to learn something about MJO. So this is from Willow and Hendon 2004 paper and this is similar to the animation I showed you before but it's, it's, it's eight snapshots instead of animation so the shading is OLR this, this is negative order anomalies, and the arrow, which is not clearly seen, but arrow is a 50 spectral winds. So the this mode they defined as MJO shows you that as as in my animation before, the convective anomalous convection <laughs> developed over the Indian Ocean and the Western Pacific. So here we focus on the propagation from the Indian Ocean <coughs> to the Western Pacific. Our question is, yeah, we we focus on this propagation. Our question is, is MGO, is every Indian Ocean convection like this makes propagation to the Western Pacific, like MGO or not? Are, so these, are these case studies or climatology? This is composite uh -huh. over many, many yeah. periods. So, so this is composite. But our question is, is MGO, every event is like this. If it, it, if it is not, if some, propaga some makes propagation, mm -hmm. and if some doesn't make propagation, we want to know what makes the difference. And it may give, you, give us some physical insight on the propagation mechanism of the MGO. So our strategy is to find Indian Ocean convection onset days and then examine propagation characteristics of each event. And this is how we find the onset dates. So the upper panel shows you the area average time series of the 2200 day band phase filter weather normally over this area. And then its standard deviation is 11.46. And this is a zoom, zoom the, the, the time series is zoomed in in the lower panel. Actually, it's mid middle of 1980 here. And we Define onset day as when the time series becomes below lower than its negative standard deviation. So we have we have 189 such days during 1979 to 2009, 30, 31 years. And if you compare the normal is over all 189 days, you get this. So you have Indian Ocean convection onset, and you have some dry anomaly here. So this is the area I use to define this onset date. And then we examine every event, how they make propagation, and what 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 controls the propagation and we what we found is the propagation whether this convection pro make propagation or not depends on the state of over the western Pacific. So I'll I'll, I'll tell you about that in a minute. How and why and 
before that, I want to make a point, which is the convection over here and over there are not very tightly coupled. You can see that, so this is correlation of the band pass fil filter sub-seasonal time scale oil are normally global against the area average oil are over here. So you, ha you can see high correlation here, but for this region, correlation is like point minus 0.15. It explains about 2% two, two variability. So I, I'm showing this because one may think that convection over Indian Ocean and Western Pacific are hi highly correlated, but it's not. So let's go back to this plot. So I made a scatter plot between the area average oil anomaly for this region and for this region. And this is the scalar plot. So x axis is convection index because my standard deviation is here. It's the it there should be some cutoff here. But you can see huge scatter in, in the dry index, which is consistent to the low correlation coefficient. And from this scatter plot, I calculate <coughs> mean of dry index and standard deviation of dry index. So, and then I classified the strong dry events as the if dry index is greater than its mean plus 0.5 standard deviation, and I classified weak dry events when if dry index is lower than its mean minus 0.5 standard deviation. So if you, we composite water normally separately for weak dry events and strong dry events, we see the difference clearly. So for strong dry events, you have much stronger negative positive water normally, which means the region is very dry, while in weak dry events, convective the water anomalies nearly zero. And then we examine Hoffmiller diagram of the Euler anomalies to, to track the MGO propagation. And this is Bay zero. And the shaded, co shaded quantity is the 20 to 100 event pass filter Euler averaged between 15 degree north to 15 degree south. So this is equatorial boiler normally you can think. And the contour is the MJO filtered boiler normally, which means in the if you free transform the boiler normally and then you make every coefficient zero except for MJO band, and then you inverse free transform that coefficient, then you get MGO filtered normally. So we in that anomaly only Eastward propagating wave number one to three period three thirty to sixty or seventy days are remaining. Everything else is removed by design. So you can see this smooth MGO eastward propagation time goes up. And from this MGO filter weather normally we we calculate MGO duration as the time between day zero and when the MGO filtered anomaly becomes higher than minus 10 atmosphere. So we have some threshold which is minus 10 and then based on that we can calculate MGO duration, how long this MGO survives and then MGO general extent, how long does it, how long it makes propagation. So we measure these quantities for every event, and then we made, made an average. So here's category, <coughs> dry, weak dry events, and strong dry events. And the second row shows you the number of NJ events. In, in, in my previous plot, it's 71 and 78 events, but I exclude <laughs> some events where at day zero, we don't have any MGO filtered anomaly. Oh, 
below minus 10. So I filtered out some weak MJ bands. But if you, you encode it, the conclusion is the same. And then first, <coughs> the MGO journal extent, average journal extent for weak dry is 30 degrees, 30 degree, 33 degree, which means these are not usually not reaching the Western Pacific. But on the other hand, the average journal extent for strong dry is about 60, which means it generally reaches reach the Western Pacific. And the MG duration is consistent with that. So <coughs> the conclusion from this plot is MG convection over the Indian Ocean lives longer and propagates further to the east when there is relatively stronger dry anomaly over the Western Pacific. So from this point, we are showing why it is. So this is the average Hawk-Miller diagram of 2208 band pass filter dweller anomaly. This is consistent to with the table I showed before. So weak dry events, and here is the zero. Weak dry events, they don't make propagation as a whole, but strong dry ma makes propagation. So this was our anomaly average between 10 degrees north to 10 degrees south average, 10 degrees north to 10 degrees south. And the conclusion is similar to the table I showed you before. And so to, to understand why this makes propagation and why it doesn't, we looked at the column integrity moist static energy deposit, where moist static energy is defined <coughs> by this equation. There are several reasons why we look at moist static energy budget instead of moisture budget. One reason is if you look at moisture budget, the dominant balance is kind of predetermined. Always vertical advection and precipitation are canceling with each other and they are dominating turns. So it's hard to know what is causing what. But in moist static energy, they are smaller terms. They are not necessarily dominating terms, so it's better for this fuzzy study. So the, the, the this shows you the column integration. So column integrated is the column integrated moist static energy storage is consists of original advection, vertical advection surface tur turbulent fluxes, and then radiative fluxes. And another reason why we look at moist static energy budget is that this is the similar wave number frequency diagram. But the shading shaded here is the coherence squared between column in integrated moist static energy and precipitation anomalies. We can think of it as R square for this wave number and frequency, how well the column integrated moist energy and precipitation are correlated with, with each other. And the arrow is the phase between these two variables. Maybe it's too complicated, but the point is the upward, pro upward pointing arrow shows you they are in phase. So column integrated moist static energy, you can think of this as precipitable water. Because in the tropics, much of moist static energy variability is explained by, almost all is explained by moisture variability. But we use moist static energy instead of moisture because in budget study, moisture is not a good, good quantity. So moisture and precipitation are highly correlated and they are in phase. But MJO here, the, the subseasonal time scale between 30 to 6 days and wave number 1 to 3, the MJO in this diagram, in, diagram is distinguished by the stronger coherence. The moisture and convection are strongly coupled 
with each other compared to other waves. So studying moist steady energy or precipitate water, how why it make why it, how it changes, how it make propagation is especially helpful for the MJO. So here I made the same plot I should before using column integrated MS moist steady energy. So you can see in weak dry case compared to strong dry case, it it has some peak. So high moist steady energy is consistent with I mean it represents their hot more normal as positive moisture and then it doesn't make propagation like this in MGO time scale, but it's like propagate very fast and makes kind of generally elongated structure. So this is moist steady anomaly. This is consistent with that of OLR. And we looked at the the terms, the vertical direction, horizontal direction, vertical direction, surface turbulent fluxes, and radio fluxes, and I found that the what explains the difference between these two is the horizontal direction of the of the moist 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 steady energy. So the here the contour quantity is column integrated moist steady energy, same as the plot I showed in, in the previous slide, and the shading is the original direction of moist steady energy. <coughs> so here we have a lot more original direction which makes you this propagation. So we think that original direction we found that original direction leads in, in strong especially in strong dry cases, original direction leads propagation of MSC and in other words, precipitation, or OLR, especially from this point. We find similar feature over this region, but the main difference is here. And then we, we want to know what, why, I mean, I mean, the, we know original convection is consists of journal and major <coughs> component. So the next slide, we decompose original advection into journal and meridional advection. They are all from strong dry events. And it's clear that the meridional advection plays more, plays dominating role over this area, while journal advection plays more role over the Indian Ocean. So for the propagation from, from the Indian Ocean to the Western Pacific, we found that the Original infection <coughs> plays an important role. And then we further decompose this original infection term into PBL and retrospheric original infections. And we find that the PBL plays a minor role and the, the whole meridional infection is governed by free tropospheric meridional infection. We also, and the reason why we looked at, we decomposed this into PBL and free tropospheric is in previous MJ theories, planetary boundary layer moisture convergence are emphasized and suggested as MJ propagation mechanism, and our results shows, suggest that Maybe this is that is not a proper explanation for the MJO MJO eastward propagation. And recently, there's some modeling and observational observational studies where they suggested the role of high frequency eddies. So we decompose the we we calculate the meridional advection term by high frequency eddies, and we find this pattern is similar, but the color bar is actually different. So here, this color is greater than six, but here, this color is greater than one. So <coughs> compared to this, the por portion of 
contribution from high, high frequency wave is is minor. So I'll, I'll come back to this point later when I explain, <laughs> when I summarize this method. <coughs> so how, how the meridional convection plays the important role is in this plot. So here, the, this is composite of OLR over day 0 to day 4. So you can see convection here. This is mi minus negative OLR normal, and here is positive <coughs> OLR normal. Here is convection. Here is dry. And the shade is the 70, 750 hectopascal meridional wind. But it, if you look at other, other red levels, it's similar. So between convection and dry, you can see this forward flow between this area, which is the eastern edge of convection. And then if you look at the time mean, time mean moistatic energy structure, which is contour in here, then you can see that it peaks over over around the equator. So the forward flow generate meridional convection over this and this region, which contribute the increase of moistatic energy or moisture over this region and which helps an MJO convection to propagate. So, so this is schematic view of the results and <coughs> here I want to discuss the MJO propagation mechanism. So when, when there is enhanced convection over Indian Ocean, the prevailing theories about the MGO historic propagation was the <coughs> they emphasized the first Kelvin wave response to the enhanced convection over Indian Ocean and, in, and the frictional convergence in the boundary layer was proposed as the MGO propagation mechanism. So when you have lower tropospheric easterly anomaly over over the over the east of current convection, then by geostrophic balance you have low low pressure anomaly over in the lower troposphere and then by friction because boundary layer have friction the, the there is there is, there is it, the, the low tropospheric low pressure induces the boundary layer meridional convergence and it in, uh, increases moisture over boundary layer and triggers convection and that's why this convection moves eastward. That was the previous the mechanism. Mechanism suggested in previous study, but our results suggest that maybe boundary layer processes are not as important as suggested before. And our results suggested when there is enhanced convection here, and when there is suppressed convection here, then we see the first Rose wave response to this suppressed convection, and then it induces forward flow between convection and the dry and this forward flow generates the because the time mean moisture moist moist energy picks over the over the equator this forward flow generates positive meridional convection over this region and in and by so it increases moisture over this region and helps next convection to occur over here that we learned from this observation about the NGO propagation mechanism. And this is not clearly understood, but I want to discuss this too, about the MGO initiation mechanism. So this is the plot I showed you before. So you, you have, if you have dry, then you, you have propagation. Then where this dry comes from? Right <coughs> from here. Then so, I mean, 
So if this tells you that when the dry before this convection makes propagation, then this convection makes propagation. Then when this dry makes propagation, I did the same calculation for dry anomaly. So the answer is when there is anomalous convection over here, then the dry makes propagation. And then where this anomalous convection come from? It's from previous convection before this dry. So this is circular. So, but we are, let me know if you have any questions here. So, we, so this is strong dry cases and strong convection cases. And if you look in here, the anomaly is pretty weak, but they are still out of phase. So our hypothesis is, and I showed you that the convection anomaly over here and here are not tightly coupled. So they can make their own path by their own mechanism, the convective moisture, convection moisture radiated by the feedbacks. And then when once some preferred condition set as this, although it could be weak, then it seems it something is starting. That's that's our hypothesis. This is has been proved yet. Maybe it will be proven to be wrong, but that's that's our hypothesis on the MGO initiation mechanism. So to summarize the associated with the MJO, the planetary scale convective anomaly over the Indian Ocean usually propagate eastward and reach the Western Pacific, but not always. The all 189 <coughs> Indian Ocean convection onset events are classified into the into three categories, strong dry, weak dry, and maybe moderate dry, based on the strength of dry anomaly over the Western Pacific. And we found that the Indian Ocean convection normally lives longer and makes a further propagation to, to the east when the dry anomaly over the Western Pacific, Pacific is relatively stronger. And we found that very general convection of column integrated moisture energy in the free troposphere plays an important role in the propagation of the Indian Ocean convection, while contributions from boundary layer and high frequency eddies are minor. <coughs> The dry anomaly over the Western Pacific plays a dynamically active role on the propagation of the MJO through the first Ross wave response to it. And this enhances meridional direction of column material moisture energy in front of the Indian Ocean convection anom anomaly and helps it makes propagation. Thank you. Did you really explain? You didn't do it in your summary. Did you really explain the initiation thing? I thought there was a little. It seemed like you have a correlation, but now is there an explanation? No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or. But well, you said something. I thought that was something happened. Or something like that. I mean, so the low correlation between. Indian Ocean convection and Western Pacific convection means they they are changing by themselves in s or some other disturbances, and it means statistically this this phase can be made many times, right? Be because they are not correlated. So I what I what I suggested is maybe that's how this MJ events later, strong MJ events later is initiated. So point is we have to look at both both basin to to see 
to understand what, what what's happening, not only over the Indian Ocean. So there's work to be done. I think so, yeah. <laughs> Some modeling studies can be, I think, yeah. So you're saying it's almost like random noise, and if you get lucky, the noise that's, happens that's, at yeah. the right time and it yeah. forces this mode. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> also, this is different from previous view where this is a continuation of this maybe this is continue next next MGO cycle is continuation of previous MGO cycle, but our results shows you that just within this two basins you can make propagation through the meridional meridian infection and wasted energy. Yeah, that's another point. You see difference yeah. between the weak case and the strong case. Is this a smooth one or is there some bifurcate bifurcation point? That, it uh, has that you have one regime and then there's some bifurcation point where you switch, where you have an, is this strong case? Or is <coughs> there some, is this, this, is this the different, you, you, you made these composites mm -hmm. between the weak, for the weak case and the strong case, mm -hmm. and is this just a st statistical dis uh, difference or is this also a dynamic difference that you have actually two different regimes? <coughs> so, I have to check statistical significance, but based on previous study, maybe the, because the standard deviation is 11, maybe something above 10 is, I think, st statistically significant. And for dynamical difference, so, this is also my personal thought. I mean, not I mean, should not be in, in the paper, but because you asked. So I thought maybe they are different mode, <coughs> different <coughs> phenomena, which is one is confined within Indian Ocean, and is and the other is interaction between Indian Ocean and West Pacific. But hasn't hasn't been. Yeah, I guess the question is, are there cases in between, half half weak, half strong? I mean, or ha I mean uh, is the, is the um, in your scatter plot, do you have two two? Right. Uh, yes, and there are in between cases yeah. too, and it's similar. Its propagation characteristics is in between these two. And also, yeah. And my my conclusion is not sensitive to how many events do you have in each category. Kind of a, a question of methodology. So, mm -hmm. if there were strong convection happening over the Western Pacific, uh -huh. would would your technique be able to identify propagation of strong convection from the Indian Ocean? into a region where the convection was already strong. It seems to me that if the convection is weak over the Western Pacific, uh -huh. then there can be more of a signal, a more of a, a propagation signal could show up there if you're starting from a dry case. It's kind of a devil's advocate question. But the, yeah, the, there is a negative anomaly here, right? And they drew. But after like 15 or 20 days, you have positive negative anomaly. I mean, it's not, this anomaly is not the anomaly from they drew. This is anomaly from seasonal cycle. So yeah, it's possible, but I think this is somewhat different. First described uh, a strong uh, case that sounded a little bit counterintuitive mm -hmm. relative to what I heard about mm -hmm. propagation of convection in the tropics. Mm -hmm. Since they are moisture waves, mm -hmm. strong convection would, can only propagate into a region which has been sort of pre-moistened. Right, right. That's right. 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 You're, you're talking about this, the yeah. importance of this meridional 
Yeah. You look, is there an easy way to measure the, the meridional, the latitudinal extent? Mm. Uh, or or we, we haven't checked very good extent of these events, but you, you, you pointed out very good point. I mean, the, so this is, because this moisture mode, it's, it's consistent with high correlation between precipitable water and precipitation. And you require, you need the pre-moistening ahead of this convection to make propagation. And our results shows you, show, shows that it happens, the moistening ahead of convection occurs strongly when there is dry here. So it's not convection is going into the dry. You can see dry anomaly become weak, weak, weaker and then finally becomes positive convection. So but this dry changes flow in between and then makes additional moistening to help this convection to propagate. Yes. It's not the dryness, it's the subsidence, right? It's really the large scale substance. Isn't that what's driving the Rossby wave? Yeah. Yes. I think I think they are seeing in the tropics. Well I guess. I mean I don't I'm done that you know, yeah. sister. Yeah. Because in the, the tropics, tropics original dynamics, temperature yeah, yeah. original original temperature gradient is small, so any temperature normally should be balanced by vertical motion. So if you're cooling, then it should be subsidence, mm -hmm. and it it affects drier into the mm -hmm. lower tropical period, which makes. Can you say a few more things about how the Rossby wave on the on the equatorial beta plane mm -hmm. works and why it has this why it has this effect that you that you're postulating? Why Rossby wave? Response happens. No, no, no. How the Rossby wave, uh -huh. um, the mechanism of the Rossby wave. Uh, I think you can look at the textbook. You can think of it as yeah. the ill type solution to the subsidence, or the the the. If you look at, I mean, in the, in the Gill paper, it describes the response of equatorial beta plane the flow by a mass source which is the the divergent circul circulation the first Berkeley divergent circ circulation and this is this rose wave response to this dry is just opposite to that one this is the mass sink rose wave response to mass sink in the first properly. So you, you want us to read the, the uh, guild paper? I, mean, I don't. I, I, <laughs> I haven't read it yet. So I was going to ask you for, for general uh, education for us. What is how? What is this equatorial Rossby wave doing? Uh, what, how is it connected to, to the other rest of the fields? So in guild paper, the he he showed that this is equator, and if you put mass source here, you put a beta plane, and then you have this Kelvin wave response to this mass source to the east, which because Kelvin wave is propagating east to eastward, and Ross wave with <coughs> mean state is checked, mean wind is zero, Ross wave is propagating westward, you see, and those waves has damping in their own damping. So they propagate their own way, but they are disappearing where if as they go because because of the damping. So the tropic mass source generate the many waves and then each wave propagates its own way by their dynamics. And what you see is the in, in in his results and in, in observations what you see is 
around mass source, you see Kelvin Kelvin response, which is low low troposphere easterly and upper troposphere westerly. Why does this lead to to moistening? Hmm? Why why does it lead to moistening? In so case? so he he discussed mass source, which is the low troposphere convergence, and we here because this is dry, this is mass sink, which is low troposphere divergence. So arrow should be reversed, and then. This rotational flow has the this poleward flow, right? And this is the equator. Moisture we ha we have moisture peak over here, so any flow from equator to poleward would affect equatorial moisture to the poleward area, right? I and it, 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 this is how the moistening happens. I thought you were needed wetting and not drying there. I don't, uh, sorry for, for, yeah. for also dominating this discussion here. It's not, not totally clear to me. Where is the, the, the source? You say the source on the right, the circle that you drew, is that, is that subsidence? Is it drying or moistening that, that, that first? This that one? Yeah. This one is subsidence. Subsidence? Yeah. Okay, that is, that's yeah. a drying, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, Here's convection, here's cloud, and here is there's no no cloud. But no necessarily less cloud, which means there's more radiative cooling and the cooling should be balanced by subsidence because original convection doesn't help. Then this subsidence generates this wave responses to the east and to the west and this Ross wave wave response to this west source helps moistening this region and convection is here. So Moistening here helps convection to the to make propagation. I thought you said it's moisture taking moisture away from the equator, so so that should be a drying effect. No. So at the equator, yeah. the there's no motion, so the equator is fine. And the for example here. Meridian of radium to moisture is negative, right? Mm -hmm. And if you have positive meridian of wind, then the meridian of vection is positive, mm -hmm. right? In geo paper, that is a steady state. The wire yeah. in geo is positive, <laughs> so it seems counter contradictive. Self contradiction because state state in Giga's paper uh -huh. the three the, the, the equation the three term partial F V and partial phi much X and plus epsilon U is empty. So it's a mm -hmm. steady state there. Yeah. Could be no propagation, but the MGL is propagated, so we have the trend in the curve. So, so self it's not self consistent. It so in your paper he looked at the response of atmos response of the tropical atmosphere to the <coughs> steady forcing. Right. So but and then this response doesn't feed back to the forcing. His forcing is given and doesn't change with time. Well, you, but this, in nature this should be changed. So this theory cannot be applied in your case. Yeah. So the forcing is moving. So, right. So, the the how how we use his theory in our work is, although the first thing is moving, I the only study that was fifty days. And yes. Oh, so the time scale is not very long. It's enough. Particularly in the equatorial region, uh -huh. Uh -huh. every course was zero. So we assume that the geostrophic motion. So for non geostrophic state to adjust to geostrophic state in the inside time, so <laughs> not a conflict. Why is it? Because you assume that. Uh, why why you does you it take you infinite time? For f equals zero, if you want to geostrophic balance to restart geostrophic balance, it's infinite time. 
that will cost real. But in mid latitude, just when you take it. That's a, few, that's a few pendulum days. That's not so long, is it? No, he's just saying that F goes to zero at the, at the equator. But uh, he's a little off the equator. Yeah, this is philosophy dynamics. And it, it, it's, it's the time scale is still oh, 10, 10, 10 pendulum days or 100, not 100, but 10 pendulum days or something. No? But PLC theory is actually is extended at the equator. You can see that. The minus equator. Yeah, the response is obvious. Yeah, that's I understood it from him that I mean he's talking about about effects that are not on the equator but away from the equator. Can I ask him a question? So according to your story today, what's what's the Because SSD is lower there, and then but there is convection. There's convection, but the organization of such a big scale convection is hard to happen happen there, I guess. Yeah, because I mean the the tropical temperature, atmospheric temperature, is set by the the warmest SSD. Which is one pole bit over in the ocean with Western Pacific, and then temperature, <laughs> original, the gradient of temperature is small, so convection is hard to happen in the phase in where it's is, 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 is it important for your theory that, that the convection is happening on the equator? So that to invoke this philosophy way uh, explanation, is it important to be right at the equator? I think not. I mean, if you if you vary location of first thing slightly, then I think you still see similar response. So not, it's not crucial, I think, which should be should be tested. Thank <laughs> you.